boy Smooth, West LA's finest. Really, really, really dope rapper. Um, really, really good dude. He recently went to Hawaii um, on a philanthropic trip where he was teaching the youth. You can see him in classrooms working with the youth as well as um, doing some performances and some battles. And he was randomly attacked by six motherfuckers who stomped him. They stomped his face and he had surgery tonight. I got word. I spoke with Kelly tonight. Um, he told me that he is, he's at his jaw wired shut. Let's wish and pray for a speedy recovery for him because, you know, Callie's a good dude. He did not deserve that. Um, on Lolo, him and I actually have a project which we were starting soon. My next project, even though I'm really working and concentrating on touring and my live set and pushing the line for the Saint and a Tyrant album as well as the other six, six, seven cult releases coming up, I was uh, had a project that I was about to be working on with Callie Smooth. That shit's still going down. Drink you your electrolytes, by the way. This shit's good for you. Um, he has a GoFundMe. I think last time I checked, he was uh, close to halfway there. 2000 is the goal. Um, I don't know. Like, He has family out there. So if I, I want to know more information from whoever the fuck this uh, promoter was. Whoever. Uh, there is a, there's a dude named... Uh, Shouts to the homie Jeremy. He actually posted on here and said, uh, I, tr I, I warned him not to perform on this island. Maybe we can get Jeremy to go live and get some more information from him. I'm inviting him specifically to this live. Um, that's horrible, I got to say. Um, Here's what I think happened, just like, and this is based on no information. You know, I've spoken to him, but this is not based on anything. I know Callie. Callie has a, Callie has a way with the ladies, you know what I'm saying? He's a West L.A. pretty boy. Chicks jock him wherever he goes. I have a feeling he was just, you know, out and enjoying himself. Some fat Neanderthals girlfriend seen him. Her fat coochie started fucking dripping stalactites and shit. And uh, somebody got jealous and they decided to give him what they call a Hawaiian welcome. What's funny is this fool's actually partially, you know, has family from Hawaii. So th that, like, to me right there, that's a very plausible scenario because there's nothing that he could have done to warrant or elicit that type of reaction. Um... Let's talk about battle rap culture, man. And let's talk about, like, some of the people we let in, you know. Like, you know, I don't even want to mention their names. But we've had now three people do things that I consider sociopathic. I think any therapist, anybody that... It, it, it doesn't take Dr. Freud to fucking realize that fabricating one's own death for popularity or to help use as an angle in somebody's round that's sociopathic tendencies now not to mention somebody literally two people that have faced hardcore sex charges you know what i'm saying that if they beat the charges they're on you know they, one of them will never have a face to beat the char chance to beat the charges and the other one uh at best case scenario is going to be on Megan's list for the rest of his life. Is there something inherent about battle rap culture that attracts these weirdos or is it just that there's so many people and it's that are involved in it that by nature, by statistics, mathematically, there has to be this many perverts and weirdos involved. What do y'all think? To me, I say it's out of pocket. I say it's out of pocket as fuck regardless. You feel me? Like, to me, there's nothing in the pocket about it. Um, even most of the people that consider themselves bloggers, now there are exceptions to the rule. People like Jay Black, you know what I mean? Like, he's never done anything that I've seen that is, you know, worthy of this type of admonishment, this type of discussion. There, there are others as well, but I mean... 
even even a few others like one was caught for being a pathological liar and having various alias accounts using to try to sway consensus in his favor and there's been all kinds of fuck shit going on as far as that as far as the blogger game quote unquote in battle rap culture is involved so what do y'all think what do y'all think The homie Condi says, battle rap does encourage egos, and big egos tend to take things. Well, I mean, is that any different than a hip-hop culture in general? You know, like, battle rap does attract egos, I would say, perhaps more so than the average fan. I mean, it's a niche market, and I would say those that do have a, you know, that do tend to follow battle rap specifically have a proclivity to have more of an ego. So I'd say uh, Condi has a valid point right there. You know, um, does that attract more weirdos per se? Is, is there a way that we can regulate this? Like, what do we do? It's like difficult because like, I'm not one for censorship. I'm not one for heavy scrutinization. Like, like what do we do? We fucking like, like literally like, fucking run police checks on everybody that enters the culture. Real deal in the function, he says, it's like giving a fuck what Mel Kipper does in his private life. Right. I mean, like, to to a certain degree, you're right. But, like, you know, when you're dealing with something as, that's, as personal a connection of rapping Especially in the a cappella format, it's essentially a conversation. And that's why, like, when we hear dope shit, there's often people cheering on the dope bar saying, talk to him, talk to this boy, talk that shit. Because you're literally speaking and it's a, there's a real conversational aspect to it. It dates back to just, you know, the verbal tradition and it predates hip hop culture and it, you know, predates, it's, it's manifested itself in many form, theater, you know what I mean, storytelling in various cultures from early in Western American to, to African to Native American to so many different cultures. So, you know, the fact that, and battle rappers tend to put a lot of their personal lives into their material, you know, and uh, so that makes it a little bit more a deeper of a connection than just like, oh, okay, this is somebody I'm a fan of. My man TD3 weighing in on the subject says, there are tons of weirdos in battle rap, more so than I'd like, but I've met way more cool people than idiots. If I have to be honest, it's overwhelming. I mean, 1,000%. That's the reason why individuals such as yourself such as real deal such as myself are literally lifers as they say in the culture we have no way in no way out we have fully invested ourselves we have fully invested our souls and a lot of that is due to the camaraderie and a lot of that is due to the fact that so many different walks of lives are brought together and so many people fuck with each other on such a deeper level pause that people you know it just is what it is. Battle rap culture is a family and we will continue to rock with each other. But I would say that overall, when you look at the sheer numbers, when you look at websites like Verse Tracker, that, um, you know, if you pay for it, you can surpass the whole ads and regardless, you can check it out. You'll see significantly more people just that participate in the art form than are a part of this camaraderie that was previously mentioned by TD3. My jit Pat O'Rourke said, when something like battle rap gets as big as it does, it will attract negativity, but the positivity should outweigh that in most cases. Optimistically, I would like to agree. Is that the case? I don't know. Now, there's, I do find it odd that there's, out of all the people that are involved in this, and so many more in the media specifically, the, the, the bloggers that have a tendency to be genuinely deviant, you know, like sex charges, the whole nine. Like I said, I'm not mentioning names because I don't want to bring attention to these individuals. 
and I don't really feel like it's it's fair to their family members, etc. Like, oh, y'all know who it is. If you want to dig deeper, call to action to all the jits. Look it the fuck up. Is there now? Anything else? Any couple more comments before we start discussing Ti and Kodak Black? Let's invite some more motherfuckers to this bitch. Uh, uh. What's happening? What's happening? Y'all already know what it is. This is once again. My new series is called The Pocket. I need y'all to decide if motherfuckers are in the pocket or out of pocket. So far, it looks like battle rap bloggers and the majority or at least a subsection of those attracted to battle rap. rap culture are out of pocket the majority of us however are in the pocket so you know there's that um what happened to cali boy smooth my partner jp cali out of pocket as fuck we ain't rocking with this fin 35 entertainment also introduces a new series that i'll be coming that will be coming soon called slap or nap and that basically um, pertains to if you have music you want to submit, independent artists, submit your music to me. And we, and when I say we, the collective panel of JITS, enjoying and watching it, will decide if it's slap or they're napping on it. If they're slapping it or napping on it. Shouts to DME. Um, who the homie Sunday Venom says is the best blogger. What I'm not is a blogger. What I am is an individual participant in the culture using whatever medium is the most applicable at any given moment to expand upon my creativity. So, slapping or napping is cracking. And at the moment, we are in the midst of in the pocket or out of pocket. Let's talk about this T.I. Kodak Black discussion. Now, everybody knows that I'm an avid supporter for several years of Nipsey Hussle. He was my favorite artist. Still remains, in my opinion, one of the greatest artists of all time in any genre of music. Um, beyond that, he's a very, very important member of the community and I believe an incarnate of the true spirit of the universe, the spirit of Christ, whatever you want to call it. I really, really, really rock with Nipsey the long way. Any disrespect of Nipsey Hussle, I don't tolerate it, as does most people from Los Angeles, such as myself, but in general. Um, Kodak Black had some choice words for his widow, Lauren London, saying, uh, basically in a condescending manner, saying he would be there for her and he wants to whoop de whoop de whoop. And, you know, to keep things in perspective, Kodak Black, he's a in his early 20s, maybe 20, 21 years old. Very talented artist. Now, there's probably a lot of people that disagree with that statement. You could uh, say bless you in the pocket or bless you out of pocket if you agree or disagree with me saying that Kodak Black is an incredible artist. He is one of my favorite artists of the time. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's real no... There's no way that you could actually not have respect for what Nipsey stood for because he stood for uplifting the community. He stood for really putting people up on game on a level that most people weren't able to do so. And he did it by speaking to the youth and speaking to people and speaking the language of people that a lot of people that have similar intentions and have similar values are not able to do so. Again, shouts to electrolytes. Good for you. Regenerate your system real quick. Man. Hope everybody's having a good day, by the way. Today's been crazy. Um, 
my godson, baby caddy, Eli, had another baseball game. Shouts to the Giants at Toluca Lake. 10-3, to strong victory. Shouts to the team. You know what I mean? Teamwork, make the dream work. So make your feet work before I make your feet, your teeth hurt. That way. So, um, a lot of people were speaking back against uh, Kodak, and there was a strong backlash to what he was saying. Uh, amongst those was T.I. Now, I personally, I, I personally find, I, per <laughs> I personally find T.I. His earlier work is some of my favorite. He is definitely a vital artist, has done so much for the city of Atlanta. It's it's crazy. Like, I'm going to have to speak. Uh, I'm going to use my T.I. voice and vernacular, my Cobb County uh, jailhouse vernacular, uh, wherever the fuck uh, T.I. was locked up. Now, indubitably, I must say the accusations that the young, over-esteemed gentleman, or should I say, ignoramus named Kodak Black, said upon the beyond highly esteemed, heavenly graced offspring of my loins, my daughter, I must say that it is, it, there's irrevocable damage that has been omitted by him and I must say that he is, must be removed from my trap museum now okay I can't even like keep going with I mean I could keep going with my TI vernacular but it's, it's it's annoying to do so um expeditiously it's kind of corny um first of all uh the fact that he removed Kodak Black from his trap museum now for those who don't know TI has a thing called the trap museum that's um he basically is shining light and exhibiting strong participants of in the southern region united states of the genre of trap music and no i'm not talking white white people dancing off beat and overdosing on fentanyl lace molly capsules at coachella i'm talking about Real trap music that originated in the southern region of the United States. Uh, I, I, as I've often said in the past and on my Flavor Junkie podcast, um, one of the first real examples of trap music is the song Take Him to Trial by The Last Mr. Big out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, a lot of people talk about Memphis, New Orleans, and Atlanta being the cities that first introduced trap music and uh regardless of that ti has a trap museum and he recently removed kodak black due to his comments about uh nipsey hustle the late great and uh um in addition to his widow lauren london who we all know ti played opposite in the film atl you know, we all fell in love with Lauren as Nunu, and it's an incredible, iconic film. Both T.I. and Lauren London did an incredible job. Uh, now, me personally, I feel like T.I. being the father figure that he is, he could have spoken a little bit. He could have come at him a little bit differently, considering the fact that he's kind of a contradiction. You know, like I, I will never never criticize somebody speaking out I'm not, and nor am I in a position for to criticize somebody speaking out for black issues or being a proponent of black culture you know like T.I. is and he's a legend however this is the same guy that signed a white Australian and allowed her to have rhymes that referenced her being a slave master no I might not be the smartest motherfucker, but from where I'm standing, that's a bit of a contradiction. And uh, maybe he's overcompensating. And, you know, I'm a fan of T.I., so I'm not trying to talk shit. Although I do feel like he hasn't really released a strong, cohesive body of work that doesn't feature Young Thug in several years since, uh, you know, 2011-12. Uh, 
Now, y'all tell me if I'm in the pocket or out of pocket. I want y'all to press the love button. If y'all are watching on YouTube, press like, subscribe to my channel. This will be going on every day, um, as well as some of the other shows that are coming up that are outlined and the production value will continue to increase.